Hi, my name's Vicky and I suffer with, or I suffered with emetophobia for 50 years. It started when I was six, when I was on an um, underground with my grandmother and it was a packed train and we had to stand up and the man next to me just bent over and started vomiting and there was nowhere where I could hide, I couldn't run anywhere, go to the other carriage um, so I just hang on to my grandmother and within the same year I was in the car with my my mum, my dad, my auntie and my nan we were coming back and my mum didn't feel very well and she said I'm going to be sick and she started vomiting and I remember climbing over from the back seat I was sitting next to her to the front seat on my auntie's lap and it's the same thing I was always trapped in transport with people being sick and then I'd be out in the street, would have, I would have gone shopping with my grandmother and someone would walk past and stop and then start vomiting. So at an early age I was associated being outside with vomiting. So it wasn't long before every time I was going to go out with my parents or my aunt or my grandmother I just felt really really sick thinking that Maybe I'm going to be sick next, or there's going to be more people being sick. And this just went on through my childhood. And even when we went out and we'd go on other day trips, I wouldn't eat anything because I felt so physically sick the whole time. I couldn't really enjoy myself because I was just waiting and looking around for people if they were going to be sick. Um, so I couldn't eat. I was just so anxious. I wouldn't eat anything until I got home. And that sort of carried on for the rest of my early childhood. It only started to get a little better when I went into my teens. And I had a good group of friends. And I used to go ice skating. And then when I got to 16, 17, I started to go clubbing. I mean, it was in the 70s, so it was just fantastic anyway. And um, <clears throat> I felt a little bit anxious sometimes when we were in clubs and somebody was drunk. And I'd look over and think, oh God, I hope they're not going to be sick. But then it would just pass and I'd go off with my friends and, you know, get wrapped up in um, just laughter and music and everything. So I, it was pretty good in, in my teenage years. It only started to go wrong again when I met my husband. I know that sounds awful. Um, he's a lovely man. Love him dearly. Um, but what happened, I think I got so used to being with him then we... We, did, we weren't going out as much and then all of a sudden when it was time for us to go out I started to feel anxious again and sick and we used to go out um, and he was looking forward to going out we'd meet up with friends and that but the whole time I just was feeling sick again sort of the old feelings of when I was a child had all come back again and I hated it I hated going out I didn't want to go out and then I started making excuses why not to go out oh I didn't feel well or I had a headache and sometimes I'd say, oh, you go out, you know, because I didn't want to stop him. Um, and then we got married and nothing really changed. If anything, it started to get worse because I suppose he was my significant other. So if I needed anything from the shops, I could ask him, uh, would you pop to the supermarket or run some errands for me? And he would do that. And I know now that that's probably the worst thing he could have done because I just got worse and worse and worse and then I, I stopped going out altogether because every time I did go out I just felt really really sick I thought I was going to be sick I thought other people around me were going to be sick and it just all came back again um, then I had my children I always wanted children but I was always frightened of morning sickness but luckily um, with all three of my children I didn't have any morning sickness. I had a little bit of nausea in the beginning with my eldest um, but that was it. But the rest of it I was really lucky, no morning sickness at all. But the sad thing about it was is that we weren't like a normal family because I couldn't go out with them. I couldn't take them to parks or theme parks or zoos or anything that normal people do with their young children. And my husband all had to do it by himself or my parents used to take them out which I suppose is other significant others. Um, so I just, what I had of emetophobia was full blown agoraphobia. But I didn't realize I had emetophobia. I thought that the feeling sick was a symptom of the agoraphobia, but I think it was all sort of interlinked. But um, now I know it, it is, it was just, a, it was just the emetophobia. 
Um, so it's been really, it has been very sad. My children have missed out on, on an awful lot, and so has my husband, because we've just not, not managed to do the things that normal families do. Um, luckily, my husband worked for himself, so he could do the school runs, he would go to the school meetings, he would go to the school plays, he'd go to the sports days. I went on a couple, um, but I just felt so anxious all the time. I'd be looking around where the toilets were, be looking for a bush in case I was going to be sick and I could hide behind the book. I mean, why am I going to be sick going out on a sports day? I mean, it was just so irrational, but that is how I thought. And I suppose it was my coping me mechanisms. I needed to know where I was going to run to in case I was going to be sick. Um, and then I was anxious because it was a primary school. You know, kids are sick all the time. So I was looking out for that. So it was very sad that my phobia, it wasn't just stopping me from doing things, it was stopping the whole family from doing things. And over the years, I've spent thousands and thousands of pounds on therapists. I've been married 30 years this year. So for 30 years, I've just been seeing one therapist after another and nobody's helped me at all. I went to somebody, I went to the Maudsley Hospital once who just, feel, who just did it's a psychiatric hospital and they said to me, oh, well what we've got to do is we've got to give you a tablet that will make you sick while you're outside. And I thought, no, well you can imagine I never went back there again. Um, and I even saw the Speakmans um, about four years back, I saw the Speakmans, I took part in um, a show and they came to the house and we filmed for two days. And that didn't really work. I mean, after the treatment they gave me, we went to the pub for lunch, and then we went out to the, the shopping centre, walked up and down the shops with my daughters and the cameras. But I felt exactly the same. I was still looking around inside, oh my God, what if I am sick? But I just put on a show for the cameras, which was terrible. And I was really, really disappointed because I've seen the Speakman's cure thousands of people before, but it just did, didn't cure me. So I was very sad about that. So I was still searching for that magical cure that I know now is in my head, was in my head, um, but I didn't know it then. So I kept looking and going online and researching and researching all the time. And then I came across Cure Your Emetophobia and Thrive. So I bought this book, this was two years ago. I bought the book and I, I read it and Nothing really gelled with me and then I thought, oh, I'll, I'll find a consultant. So I found a consultant that was near me and um, they'd be able to go over the book a little bit better. But because my metaphobia had turned into full-blown agoraphobia, just the journey there was enough. I was just in such an anxious state really when I got there, even though I held it together. And people say, oh, you look so calm, you, you look so calm, but we're just great at hiding things. But inside, I was just falling to bits. So when he was talking to me, I wasn't taking anything on board. And I saw him twice. And um, the third time, I, I had a panic attack as I was getting in the car, so I didn't even get to him. So I never, I phoned him and I said, I can't come because I've had a panic attack. And that was it, I stopped going. So then I started going online and looking again, and then I was brooding and feeling sorry for myself. And the crux came, really, it all came to a head, at the beginning of the summer this year, where I wanted to go to the supermarket. The supermarket's another big thing for me. I never do a big shop, I have it all delivered. But I wanted to go and get a few bits. And um, I felt a bit queasy in my tummy because that's what I always do. If I wanna go out, I see how I'm feeling or my tummy's feeling. And if it's feeling queasy, I won't go. So it was feeling a bit queasy and I thought, oh, I'll go tomorrow. And then I thought, no, you won't go tomorrow and you won't go the next day. It's the same old, same old. You know, you're doing this over and over again. And then I started really feeling sorry for myself, saying you're never going to get over this. You're going to be like this for the rest of your life. Woe me, woe me. So I came downstairs and I sat in the garden. It was a beautiful sunny day. And I looked at the trees and the birds and I just thought, I can't do this anymore. I feel so physically and mentally tired, that I'm just worn out of mentally thinking a way out of this phobia. And my husband came out five minutes later and he said to me, what's wrong? And then I said, oh, nothing, nothing. And then he started to clean the fish pond and sort of there was 10 minutes of silence. And he said, Vicky, 
he said, you're just oozing depression. He said, you're radiating unhappiness. And I said, oh, am I? I said, oh, I'm really sorry. And he said, you know, it really makes me sad when you're like this. He said, because you don't want to talk about it and I can't help you and I don't know what to do. And you just keep it all to yourself and you just walk around really solemn and it really brings us down. And then I thought, oh my God, I've been doing this to him for the last past 30 years. Like, it must be awful to live with somebody like that. And he's put up with me and not just that, my girls, everything that they've missed out on over all the years and the places and the things we haven't all done together. And then I thought, God, you've got to snap yourself out of this. You've got to put in 110% You've got to do it. You've got to find something. You can do it. You're an intelligent person. So I thought, well, the Thrive book is upstairs. Go and get it again and bring it down and start reading it. So I brought it down and start reading it. And I thought, oh, my God, that's just like me. I think just like that. How does Rob know that I think like that? And it was just it was just mind blowing that he he was inside my head thinking who he just knew how I was thinking all the quirky little ways and like nobody knows like that's how I think and then I thought I'm going to get a find another therapist I didn't go back to the old ones I thought no I'm going to do a fresh start and then I went on to the Thrive website and I saw that you did Skype and I found Cara and she was amazing and she ran me through everything again and um Eight weeks later, I've done more in this eight weeks that I've done in 30 years. And I don't know how. Two years ago, maybe I just wasn't ready for it. But this time, I'm just absorbing it. I mean, the Thrive book is my Bible. I'm reading it every day. I go over sections. I've highlighted sections. And it really is my Bible. I mean, I'm still a work in progress. Um, but I've just done so much. And it's absolutely amazing. And all my husband is saying to me is, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe we went there. Oh my God, you're just doing so well and you're not freaking out. And you just seem to be so much happier and you're not moody. And you just seem so much more relaxed. Now he sees it, I don't see it. Um, but obviously people around me are seeing it and it's it's just wonderful. It's just absolutely wonderful. Um, we've been out for lunch for a couple of times and normally that would be a big palaver for me. Because I'd have to go and see where the toilets were. And it couldn't be just one toilet, it had to be two toilets, because if somebody was in that toilet, I'd start panicking. So if I felt as if I was going to be sick, I needed a toilet I could be sick into, and that no one could see me. I mean, how crazy is that? Um, so, but when I was there, I thought, there was only one toilet, and it was quite a big restaurant. And I thought, hey, you know, you don't feel sick, you're not going to be sick. This is your old way of thinking. It's so habitual to think like this. And I realised that, and then I thought... And even if I did feel sick and I was sick, I'd be able to cope with it. And I went back and I had a nice meal with um, everybody and it was great. And I've done that three times. And um, my husband started salsa classes three years ago. Sorry. He started salsa classes a year, a year ago. And he said, do you fancy coming? And I thought, oh, no, 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 no. But I did. I've been three times now, which is just totally weird for me. If he'd have told me that, what, two months ago, three months ago, there's no way in the world that I would have ever contemplated that. And I've actually been, I've done the beginner's class, and I've been mixed in my social anxiety. I was a little bit iffy, but then I realised what I was doing, and I was creating it, and it came down. And I've actually been doing the beginner's class. The third time I went, I did have a major panic attack in the car. Um, it came on so quickly, and it peaked and then started to come down. And normally what I would have done, I would have said, I'll oh, stop the car, stop the car, turn back and take me home. And I didn't. I went with it and I was talking to myself all the time saying, look, you've handled this. This is, you've, It's actually peaked. Nothing's happened. Nothing's going to happen. And even if you did, were going to be sick, you could handle it. And for me to be thinking like that is crazy. That's not how I think. And I did it and I went along to the class. So I'd had a panic attack in the car. I'd actually gone along and I did an hour class of dancing with there was 80 people there and I was dancing with different partners and then I sat again while my husband did the intermediate class I was sitting there for another hour and that to me is just mind-blowing
that's not what I would have done three months ago. So this book is truly amazing. It's, it's easy in principle, but the hard thing is, is because I suppose I've thought this way for such a long time, I suppose 50 years, you know, it's, it's habitual, it's a habit to think bad pes pessimistic thoughts. But now that I'm realising that I'm doing it, I counterattack it with the posit positive, and the positive thoughts are winning, so I'm doing it, and it's just amazing. I feel so much better. I'm actually looking forward to life. Um, I've actually started to buy high heels because I'd always walk around in flats because if I needed to run to a toilet or anywhere I could get there quicker with flat shoes so I'm actually buying higher heels to go to salsa with and um, life's great it is so good and my husband can't praise me enough all the time he's saying you're doing so well you're doing so well I can't I can't believe that you're just doing so well and um, but what I need to do is praise myself more which is not what I'm doing I need to praise myself like my husband's praising me especially for the little things, because you do forget to do that, because you get so wrapped up in your thoughts and what you're doing with the book that you do forget to praise. But that is so, so important, because that really does bring your self-esteem up and it just gets easier and easier every day. <clears throat> so I can't praise this book enough, and all thanks to Rob and thanks to Cara. And it doesn't matter how long you've had this. I mean, I've had it for 50 years so it doesn't matter how old you are, you can get over it. And it really is just your thinking that's doing it. And with a little time and practice, you can get over it. I'm already looking to go on a cruise holiday next year, which everybody's really looking forward to, and so am I. Um, so, you know, it's amazing. I'm actually looking forward to the future. And it's all down to the Thrive Book. So, thank you. If I can do it, you can do it. Bye.